So do you think breeding outside is the key here in Florida? No. No. Just got I, lucky. I just got lucky that time. I've had I've got five cages of outdoors. None uh, none of them have ever done anything. Dave Palumbo here at the Daytona Reptile Breeders Expo. I'm going to be going in and see my good friend Tom Crutchfield. I'm here with my good friend Paul Miller. We'll be interviewing all the booths. We'll be hopefully not buying too much today, although I know myself I'll probably wind up with something. And we're going to be seeing old friends from across the reptile breeders world. I love going to Daytona. It's the only show I really go to every year, and it's because it's one of the best. Stay tuned. we got a lot to talk about. I'm standing here with Tom Neely of Tom and Teresa Reptiles. We want to get that right. And I'm fascinated. I love blue tongue skinks. Everyone knows that. Um, I think they're the awesome li uh, lizards. Uh, they're perfect pet for people. I have a lot of trouble getting to breed, unfortunately, but we can talk about that in a minute. But you have a, a patternless line here. Tell us a little bit about the patterns. Can we take one of them out, maybe? Well, uh, yeah, she can get one out. Uh, that they came originally from a patternless female that was found in my backyard. You found it in your backyard? I had a pair out in an outdoor cage that was an old macaw cage, and the holes were too big. And I fully intended to put hardware cloth on there and, uh, you know, half-inch hardware cloth where they couldn't right. get out. Right. But they're not supposed to be producing babies in March. And right. that was the first babies that I had outside. Wow. And then they got out, and luckily we found it. It's the only baby we found. So do you think breeding outside is the key here in Florida? No. No. Just got I, lucky. I just got lucky that time. I've had I've got five cages of outdoors. None, uh, none of them have ever done anything no? to to speak of. You know. Interesting. But you got this patternless from that. Yeah. And uh, these are awesome. Yeah. They. It's taken about four or five years, and then uh, as I was saying, the the original patternless female has never produced a patternless. So the yep. original female that gave you this pattern has never produced another one? Never produced another pattern. And you bred her to the same male? And, and she's been bred to the same male as her daughter. Her daughter produced oh, yeah. a two or three patternless the first year she was bred. Produced, wow. Produced babies when she was one year and six days old. So the babies have produced patternless, but the mother never did them again. And the same thing this year. None of these are from the original mother. Looking at the uh, at the babies that you've produced, do you think it, this is a recessive trait? I wished I knew. I don't know that much. You can't about, prove it yet. Yeah, I don't know that much about genetics, but I've been talking to people that do. Mm. What do they think? They don't have any idea because every time I say, well, the patternless female, the original right. patternless female never produced a patternless. Right. They said, what? You know, they had it all figured out in their head until I told them that. And then they, uh, right. I mean, th this is really, you know why it's so beautiful? Because it's dark, but yet it's got a blank back. And I think that just looks so cool because you still have the pattern on the sides and the tail, yep. yet you have nothing on the back. Yeah. I'm, I'm uh, looking forward to, got a lot of other uh, aberrant patterns and colors and whatnot coming up. Now they have interesting colored eyes too. I noticed the eyes are real light. Yeah, yeah. You don't think that has anything to do with this patternless gene? I don't know, don't know. I wish I knew. And the t I've, if you notice, look at the tongue. The tongue is not totally blue. It's got pink in it. Yeah. So that happens every once in a while. You'll see some of them that are. I've seen uh, azanthics with that. I've never seen like the regular blue tongues. Yeah, I've, I've seen regular ones that, that had pink on their tongue, but generally blue on the outside edges. Do you think that there's some kind of like a hypo gene in here too, as well as, as this patternless? I wish I knew. Because you know, in, in, in boas, the, the, the hypo gene will erase some pattern sometimes. I'm wondering if maybe that has something to do with it, like some kind of like weird hypo gene. Because I love that eye on this. This this got a great eye. Yeah. Yeah, I was working with uh, Michael Cole, and, and he's a big ball python breeder. I guess yeah. you know who he is. Yeah, I know Michael. And uh, he... He's not sure what the heck's going sure? on. What's your secret to breeding blue tongues? How do you get them to breed? What's the, if you had to give people like a, a five minute like a, or a two minute uh, tutorial? I always breed watching 
what's going on. In other words, I put a male, or at least what I believe to be a male and female, or I know from previous years, right. in a cage, indoor, outdoor carpet on the bottom. Okay. I put usually about four cages. Go get my little step ladder, open it up, sit down on the top step, and watch. Okay, you don't leave them alone. No. Okay. I do not leave them alone at all. Do, uh, do you do you, do you brewmate? The northerns do. The the uh, Indonesians no. You don't have to do that. No, you don't don't have to, and and I don't even stop feeding them anymore. You don't, and you just I put. Used to feed, I used to stop feeding them, but the more I've changed, you know, what I do, the better. Because most people tell you Marukis, you can't breed them in captivity. But I what, are think these, what, what are these? What locality are these? Marukis? Mar Marukis. And so you just put these guys together at some point? Yep. I had one that, that uh, normally they're, you know, two, three years old before they have babies. They had, a, had patternless babies at one year and six days of age. Wow. Just, and what, what made you decide to put them together? I, she was big. She was plenty big enough. And as, as the old saying goes in reptiles you know if they're big enough to breed breed them so, so at the I end tried of them and and that was i tried two or three and that was the only one that that took at the end of the day there are no rules yep remember that guys there are no rules you make your own rules dave palumbo learning about blue tongue skinks here at the daytona reptile show